In a post-COVID-19 world, we are faced to look at how we do business, how we engage with customers, and what opportunities to harness. If you're looking for clarity and direction in the fashion digital space, then the latest initiative launched by award-winning designer and entrepreneur Gavin Raja called Fashion Authority is your answer. Welcome back to The Loft, Gavin. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to always see you. I mean, the last time we saw you, it was amongst much happier times. I know the COVID scare had slowly started creeping in, but you were able to still showcase your beautiful designs publicly and truly go above and beyond. How has lockdown treated you now, it being two months in? Um, well, I think, you know, there's, there have been good things and there have been very bad things about the, you know, the lockdown. Obviously, the attendant kind of drama with COVID and the virus and the impact it has on people and people's lives. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's very sad. But I think what it has done is it really kind of uh, it was a time to sit down and be very introspective, be very reflective and actually to plot, a, you know, a future, uh, which I think, you know, to, to many, I think this future was was still to come, but I think, you know, this lockdown kind of almost catapulted us into, into this fourth industrial revolution and made us uh, kind of understand, uh, you know, or relook how we do business, you know, and how, how we should be doing business perhaps yeah. in the future. Yeah, and throughout it all, you are pretty consistent, Gavin. I know you are very passionate about child and women abuse and violence against them. You still are continuing to fight this cause even through the global pandemic. So please may you speak to me about your work through the Lighthouse Movement. So the White Light Movement is, uh, you know, uh, an NPC that I started a couple of years ago, and and really it was its focus was really on women and, and and actually the mothers of children who had been abused, and obviously without some form of you know economic transformation for these women, many of them are not able to leave either the vulnerable communities they stay in, or kind of in some instances also move away from the person inflicting the abuse. Um, and then what kind of really happened out of this entire thing? Was was that, um, you know, women needed to learn a skill, which so we taught them a skill of sewing, embroidery, beading, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't really know or actually hadn't anticipated what a huge um, upswing of domestic violence incidents and cases we'd have during the lockdown. But as we'd all know, globally, this was a, a huge issue. In fact, it was its own pandemic altogether uh, of the way amount of abuse that was inflicted on women and children. Um, so this became very relevant in our context in South Africa and, um, you know, I continue to work in terms of trying to see how we could alleviate this and also how we could work with other organizations in the community to uh, bring relief to the situation and to offer kind of shelter to many women as well as, um, you know, some form of relief for them and their children. I mean, we've had very high inc uh, incidences of abuse as well for kids during this lockdown. Mm. It is scary to see the statistics coming out of households that um, is directly related to abuse against women and children. And I'm so glad that you are still as passionate as you were before, even during COVID-19. Now, Gavin, you're not only a fashion designer and, you know, just multiple awards under your belt, but you're also into the homeware space and interior space. Now, due to COVID-19, you, like so many creatives around the world, have taken a bit of a blow. However, you still managed to come up with a Amazing initiatives that have helped you and fellow creatives. So please may you speak to us about your latest initiative called Fashion Authority. Um, so one of the things I've been working prior on, 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 um, on prior to this entire lockdown and COVID era was looking at kind of where the fashion industry was going. And, and you know, for many of us who were in the industry, we knew that before this even happened, the industry was in a bit of a fragile state. Um, you know, there were many kind of uh, brands that had folded internationally. Many businesses had collapsed. Um, huge kind of retail footprints, uh, which were, had contracted. And um, to a large extent, this was kind of a spillover from 2018, where, um, you know, many there were many investors in brands around the world. But rather than opting and focusing on quality and delivery, they looked at expansion. So in this era, obviously, expansion didn't really work for them. Uh, but one of the things which is really lacking and um, is really kind of an issue in, in the South African context is the fact that we're not agile as businesses and we're not digitally agile as businesses. 
um, and I'm speaking very specifically in the fashion industry. I mean, we do have some online retail, but what is that experience going to be? And moving forward, how how will we be able to still offer some form of personalized experience, some kind of very tailor-made experience? Mm -hmm. And what will that take? And this really takes a very good understanding of, um, you know, besides just e-commerce, but really how the world interacts uh, with, with, with these kind of sites and mm -hmm. and what you need to be communicating. So, you know, I looked, at, looked around uh, what were the barriers uh, for people who were wanting to kind of play in this space. And really it was, you know, looking at creating e-commerce websites and platforms for them. And so um, I came up with the way in which we could offer a very kind of smart package. So offering someone their custom, you know, domain mm. e-commerce platform um, and also then helping them with content creation through newsletters and to engage, for customer engagement for CRM because, you know, your inbox is now going to be on your news feed. Mm. So it was just looking at how we could do these kind of things and how it specifically relates to the fashion industry. Together with this was also trying to create an online resource of information um, for designers to access so they were able to kind of read things on trends, um, trends in retail, trends digitally that were happening around the world, um, and then trends just in terms of design and, in, you know, latest innovation, because I think the future is really going to be about innovation and also looking at how one can um, pivot their brands to, you know, to do new things as well. Yeah. It sounds very crucial right now for businesses to reimagine how they present themselves to the world in all ways, from the digital space and even, you know, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And everyone has had to kind of remodel the way in which they go about their day-to-day -day, um, runnings of the business. And also the economy has reopened, it being alert level three. So right now, a lot of people need all of this advice. So what specifically can can you do on a very practical level for these brands that want to engage with Fashion Authority or any other initiative that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? What advice and tips can we see coming out? I think the most, um, you know, the, the best advice one can kind of give smaller businesses is for them to be agile. For bigger businesses, it's been a little bit more difficult because, mm -hmm. you know, they've got to mobilize a lot of kind of people, there's lots of decisions and the decision making process is very kind of lengthy and sometimes very time consuming. Whereas for smaller businesses, it's much more easier, you know, you can quickly make decisions and adapt to the kind of environment and, and the kind of circumstances you're faced with. So for me, the thing is really to look at exactly what are, what are the kind of issues that you're facing. So at the moment, if you're not able to sell because you're having, you know, issues around having retail space or, you know, simply the fact that you, you don't really have an outlet anymore, mm -hmm. well, then digitally is the way to go. But it's not just creating an e-commerce platform. It's also the designers who are wanting to sell their merchandise through other people. So what are, what are the new showrooms going to be selling online and having a very strong um, digital kind of presence mm -hmm. across many platforms? and leveraging this so that you can access a new mark access new markets as well. Mm. It sounds like this innovation and this creativity to you comes so naturally. So thank you so much for extending yourself to the rest of South Africans and business owners. They definitely appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers Gavin. Now from the white light movement to the fashion authority, Gavin Rogers seems to be doing it again, coming out not only with the best, but helping South Africa as a whole.